This is Justin. And this is Haley. And you're listening to The Price of Avocado Toast. We're a married millennial couple wanting to normalize conversations about money. We want to hear about your highs and your lows. The do's and the don'ts on your path towards financial freedom. Hi, Toasties. Welcome to The Price of Avocado Toast. Whether you're a first-time listener or you've been following us from the start of this thing, we're so glad to have this conversation with you today. That was my drum roll. That's your drum roll. <laughs> you are no uh, Clark Griswold, that's for sure. Yours is better. <laughs> Thanks, honey. Today we're talking all about the debt-free journey and the burnout that can happen and how to prevent it because I feel like that's really important. I think it's super important too. The debt-free journey can be long and difficult and burnout is a real thing. Yeah, for sure. Especially if you're looking at six figures or more of debt, you're not going to get out of that overnight. No, it's going to take some long and sustained practices for sure. So we thought it'd be a good idea to share some things with y'all today. A couple notes before we dive into the episode. The first one being, I start school in two days. So this is going to be a shorter episode so that it's a little bit easier to edit and take care of before I go back to school. And then the second thing is you might hear some weird scratchiness or uh some nasal sounds in my voice i got like a super bad allergic reaction to something on my campus today and my face like swelled and puffed up and like my throat started getting dry and scratchy my eyes were watery and swollen shut like it was kind of scary but uh, i'm still coming down from that so i've taken some benadryl and i'm doing a little bit better but still a little beat up Benadryl makes me go night night, so I'm surprised that you lasted this long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really, uh, it was a pretty wild thing, and it was like right in the middle of a staff meeting with all the middle school teachers. So I probably looked uh, pretty weird, but everybody was super <laughs> kind on my campus and was like, "Hey, you doing all right?" I'm like, "Yep, don't mind me. You just don't know how to live." I <laughs> just moved here, and allergic yeah, just to the trees. <laughs> not used to the dry air. Uh, it's probably the smoke too, because we're surrounded. We live in Northern California. And if you haven't caught the news these days, California's on fire. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. bad. There's I'm sure smoke the smoke everywhere. probably has something to do with it too. Definitely. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. But nonetheless, we're here and we're here to talk about preventing burnout along your debt-free journey. It's such a, again, it's such an important topic mm-hmm. because when you start to get to that six figure debt and above. I mean, that's a long, long time you're working on that and hammering away at it. And it's really important that you take care of yourself so that you can prevent some of these things from happening. And so you can continue your momentum. Mm -hmm. We have these big, luscious goals to get out of debt. And I'm looking at our poster, and it said that we still had $90,000 left to pay off on student loans. That's a big number. (laughs) That's a huge number. And so if you're overwhelmed by the amount of debt that you have, and if you've done the math and it's going to take you like multiple years to get out of debt, it can just be a really scary big thing while you're tackling the whole entire process. So we once you get momentum, we want to keep it going. So we're going to give you some tips on how to how to keep going without burning out and crashing with the debt-free journey because that wouldn't be fun. Not <laughs> at all. We wanted to start though by talking about three of the common things that we see along the debt-free journey, not only in our own journey, but for those for people that we've walked alongside as they've started their debt-free journey. We wanted to share three of the common trends that we see and kind of how they manifest themselves along the debt-free journey. So you want to kick off number one? No, I'll do number two. Okay, I'll, I'll kick off with number one then. So the first thing or the first trend that we see is this comparison trend where people begin to think, well, they have this and I don't have this, but I want this thing. Mm-hmm. Or it can also mean they have debt freedom. And I don't have this debt freedom. And then I start to get in this negative self-talk space. And both sides can be really toxic. Obviously, if you get, you know, the desire to keep up with the Joneses or, you know, you get envious of something that a neighbor or a colleague or a friend has, that's obviously going to manifest itself into some bad behaviors. I shouldn't say bad. That's not great. Maybe some uh, unhealthy behaviors around money. But then the flip side of that is when you start to see others going through their debt-free journey and they're finding success or even at the end now of their debt-free journey, you can start to beat yourself up and think, geez, I just wish we could get there. Mm -hmm. Why aren't we there yet? And it's a really toxic mindset because everybody's journey is different. And it's so important that you validate your own journey 
And it's okay to celebrate someone else's success, but don't compare it to yourself. I think there's a famous saying like comparison is the thief of joy or something like that. And, and I think that just rings so true with something like this because you could be having a ton of success on your own journey. But if you compare it to somebody that's already done, it might look like you're not that far along. And we really want to keep our own, uh, you know, headlights on our own journey. I'm also thinking the people who are on a debt-free journey looking at everyone else not knowing whether or not they're on a debt-free journey themselves. You know, you see the rest of these people and maybe you've chosen to be public on social media and announced that you are officially starting your debt-free journey, but you follow people and you see these things and you don't really know where they're at financially because our job is to hopefully normalize these, these conversations about money, but not everyone talks about money. So you don't know where they're at. And you just see this this beautiful life that they have and it might all be fake, you know, but it's really hard to, to decipher that when you're in this moment where you are s- sacrificing so much to get out of debt and you're kind of miserable there for a minute and all you see is everyone else happy living their perfect little lives. So yeah. try to just focus on your own your own journey and it's very, very hard sometimes to do that, but that's very important. I think you brought up something interesting as well. Like, you know, the debt-free journey can be miserable sometimes and it's mm-hmm. because we've built a life around some of these other things that maybe are not essential, maybe not, you know, worth the value we place on them monetarily. They probably bring us some type of happiness. Oh, for sure. And so when we start to cut those out of our budget or cut those away from our life, it really does start to, you know, weigh you down a bit. And and until you change the mindset around those things from a I need or an I want to just I enjoy and when I have the money I can do these things, you know, it starts to get a little bit better. But until then it can be really, really difficult to uh to find joy along this journey. So I think it's wise of you to say, like, it it can be miserable sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely not always going to be fun while you're getting out of debt. No. But as we've mentioned before, you know, if if people could sacrifice for 12 months, for for, for 24 months, you know, two years, the long-term payoff is, I mean, it's just wonderful. The feeling is just great. Definitely. Love that. Okay, this next common trap and i put this on the list because this is something i struggle with is the all or nothing mentality i'm an enneagram three you're an enneagram three the way that we think of things sometimes is you know if i'm not doing this full force all in you know we don't want to half-ass things if i'm not doing it 100 percent, then i'm not doing it at all like diet and exercise are very similar. I like to think of those kind of all in the same element in the mind space that you go in. Just because you mess up one day on your budget does not mean the whole rest of the month has to be screwed up. Or just because you messed up an entire week, it doesn't mean the whole month has to be screwed up. Just like if you happen to eat a pizza on a Wednesday night, that doesn't mean you have to sabotage the rest of your week. Or if you missed a workout, they're all so similar and they come from the same mindset of just being able to accomplish something. And we've talked about this before, you know, when you follow through with something and you say you're going to do it and then you do it, you're giving yourself that confidence to continue to do it. I said, you know, you put your confidence buckets, more confidence in your buckets or whatever. What did you say? Yeah. I like to think of it as like a bank deposit. There you go. Yeah. But, you know, then you follow up, follow through with it. Yeah. And, you know, I think I think you're onto something there, too, when you talk about that, you know, we have a tendency to get into, again, that negative self-talk. Yeah. Where it's like, well, I've already messed this up. So I'm, you know, it's not even worth it anymore. And it's because right before that time, or, you know, maybe shortly before that time, we've had a pattern of non-success mm-hmm. right that's probably led us to those moments you and i for example had a pattern of non-success with credit cards had a pattern of non-success with you know budgeting and finance so then when we would have days where maybe something came up and we had to spend a little bit more than we wanted to or we forgot to put something in the budget it, it was really easy for the first reaction to be oh here we go again we're mm-hmm. back into trouble. 
And it takes a second to just like breathe and like ground yourself back into weight. This is a speed bump on the road, but I'm still going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And I can go over this speed bump and continue on the path. And I think that's important. And I've told my clients time and time again with financial coaching, you are going to mess up. You're going to have these goals and you're going to trip over yourself for a minute. It's going to take several months before you feel like, okay, I think I know what I'm doing. And even then, it's still a work in progress. We are like two years deep and I would say we're like almost out of of our debt-free journey because we're like virtually debt-free with the student loans, but we're still on the budgeting journey. Yeah. And and even now, we're still figuring it out. Mm -hmm. Every month, you're going to continue to figure it out and your lives will change and expenses and income will fluctuate. And it's it's a constant work in progress. So you have to know that you will mess up. That is okay. Pick yourself up and continue moving on. Yeah, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Oh, for sure. And it, it it just absolutely boils down to how you choose to attack that hurdle and and move through it. And that's again, it's a common trend. Like we we're talking about this because we've done it. Most people do it, you know, where it's like I've already screwed this up, who cares? And we want to urge listeners like take a deep breath, keep kicking butt and and stay on the right track because mm-hmm. it's worth it in the end. All right. Do you want to go over number three or would you like me to go over number three? Hmm. I'll do it. Okay. okay. Number three is, and I can, when I think of this, I think of so many people, just the workaholic. The, mm-hmm. Falling into the trend of, I need to get out of debt so bad that I'm just going to work myself to death. And that is not healthy. And if you need us to tell you to kind of pause and take a break, here's your permission. To yeah. pause and take a break because it is not healthy to be working 14 jobs, 90 hours a week, and not sleeping. Now, that being said, I did say earlier, part of the debt-free journey won't be comfortable. Sometimes it will suck. Sometimes you will have to have a second job. Mm-hmm. You had a second job. You were about to have a third job there for a minute, and then COVID took that out. Yep. But just it doesn't have to be work, 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 work all day, every day for the rest of your life. Like that, Dave Ramsey, when we followed him, was telling people, you know, get get second and third and fourth jobs. And we did. And then it was really exhausting. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, you literally had a full-time teaching job Yeah. on top of serving like two or three nights a week. Yeah. And it was a lot. It was absolutely a lot. And I think that we get into the mindset that, this is the only way I can get out of debt. Mm-hmm. And it's not. It's an accelerator to getting out of debt. Sure. Obviously, making more income is going to be an accelerator to your debt-free journey. But there's always a value trade-off. Mm-hmm. And it's really important you identify those priorities and values as you get started because you don't want to give those things up. I think for me, I was always like, well, I'm young. I I still, like, I'm I'm almost 30. And I'm like, no, I'm still, like, you know, 22 year old Justin, like I'm good. I can work that many jobs. Then I realized, wait, but I have a young baby at home and I have a wife at home who need me to be there. And I have a family who needs me to be present and, you know, awake and around. And it's okay to pause some things along the debt-free journey so that you can align those values and priorities a little bit more. Now, it doesn't have to be, well, I'm quitting my second job. It doesn't have to be that. It could be that your second job, instead of, you know, I don't know, a traditional 20 hour a week job, is a catering job that you get to set your schedule and you only pick up two to three shifts a month. And then when the month is maybe a little bit busier and you'd like to work some more, you can get six shifts or whatever it may be. You find ways to, to take rest while also still working through your debt free journey. And, and that's important. When you were working all of those jobs, you would go teaching straight to bartending or serving, mm-hmm. and it was an all-day thing. And I was okay with it, like, one one or two days a week. And that was something that we decided together, you know, it was to sacrifice for the short term because we wanted to get out of debt faster. But then people, you know, shifts started getting funky with COVID, and you had to take more more hours. And then And then we really had to reevaluate 
how much time you were gone mm-hmm. and how you were missing time with our with our child growing up and we really had to figure out like what our priority was at that time and i'm not saying because you have a second job you're not prioritizing your family because you are doing that in another way yeah absolutely um but yeah just make sure you're also talking to your partner if you do have one because you want to be on the same page about what those priorities are Mm -hmm. and if you are prioritizing like we're gonna sacrifice this for six months then you guys have to be in agreement because if you're not then it's not gonna work yes it's gonna cause like some serious arguments yeah and you can do anything for six months you know if you know it's a season of life and you can talk to your partner and plan that out i think you can do it but it so 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 comes down to communicating with your partner you know you don't want to get into a situation where your mental health is struggling your partner's mental health is struggling and now you're on this already difficult and potentially miserable journey and you have bad feelings with the teammate who's alongside you you never want that you want to be a cohesive team that is ready to attack this thing as as best possible so i I appreciate you saying that yeah, and I, I also think, like, if you're not on the same page, it's going to be really way easier to spiral back where you way started. Way easy. Yeah, absolutely. Because you have to be on the same page to move forward. Because sometimes one person might not be able to recognize all the positive, and you need that other person to be like, wait a minute, look at how far we've come. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I went on a tangent there, but it's, it's really important. You have to be on the same, same page with, with people. Your whole household, really. Yeah, I agree. All right. Now we're going to give you some action steps to make sure that you can continue moving forward with this great momentum and to make sure that you do not burn out on your debt-free journey. Yes. And before we even dive into that, if you're somebody who's finding themselves in one of the three trends that we mentioned, either the comparison trend, the all or nothing trend, or the workaholic trend, reach out to us and we'll, you know, talk through that with you and maybe give you some more tips on what has helped us. Yeah. This is going to be a shorter episode, so it's obviously not our whole debt-free journey and all the conversations we had, but these are things that we've gone through and things that we've talked about often, and um, communication was the only way that we could get out of those trends and those dips. So if you're somebody that's you know feeling like we're, we're connecting in that same trend or that same trap, reach out to us because we'd love to support you while you're trying to get out of it. Yeah, we can give you some suggestions too. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. The first action step, I kind of mentioned this, but you want to really celebrate the little wins along the way and take it day by day. You're focusing on the whole entire journey and not just like getting out of debt, like the end destination. Mm -hmm. I've heard people say, fall in love with the journey. Don't worry about the destination. Well, you want to worry about the destination because that's why you're doing it. Yeah. But, you know, it's not going to be big wins every single day. The debt-free journey is up and down and up and down. And if you only went to Starbucks once that week, that's a win. Mm -hmm. If you used to go five days and you went one day, that's a huge win. Celebrate those little things because all of those little wins will add up to huge success. And I think as people are going through the debt-free journey, we only, you know, if they talk about it with people, we only celebrate it and name it success when it's big milestone stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've paid off over 20 grand or, oh, I've paid off all of my student loans. But it's so true. If your habit was to go to Starbucks five times a week and you've cut that down to once or twice, that's potentially 10 to 20 bucks you're saving a week alone. Mm -hmm. That over a month, over a year is a huge number that you're cutting out of your budget. And that's really important to celebrate that because, you know, if you tell somebody, hey, I only went to Starbucks twice this week, they're going to be like, okay, cool. I only want no time. So, (laughs) right. But within the context of, hey, I used to go five times and I'm working on my budget and my spending and I'm now down to two. Yeah. Then they can say, wow, you're, you're, you know, significantly lower. That's great. And so it's really important to to focus on those little wins and, and stack them up, put them in your confidence bank. I'm going to brag about a client here for a second. Yeah. I was working with someone this week and they said that they'd sold some stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, well, tell me what you sold. And they start listing off all these things that they sold. And each thing was, 
it didn't seem like it was that much money. And by the end of it, I tallied it up. And in a week, they sold over $500 worth of things from their house. That's a huge win. Huge win. So all of those little teeny things that you sold or money that you saved or debt that you paid off, even if you just threw 50 extra dollars at a student loan, celebrate yourself. Give yourself a pat on the back because those are huge wins. Yes, that's awesome. I love that. And shout out them if they're listening. That's super rad. Very You're cool. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, action step number two. Put time in the calendar to enjoy your life. And I know that sounds wild, but like actually plan and put things in the calendar that you enjoy. And this doesn't have to be a super expensive you know, date out or expensive dinner or expensive hobby that you like. There are things you can do in your town that are free to low cost that can still bring you fulfillment and bring you enjoyment. Mm -hmm. But when there are things like that, it's a little bit harder to, I don't want to say plan them, but to get yourself maybe excited for them. Yeah. Maybe you take them for granted. So if you put them in your calendar, it's something to look forward to. And looking forward to those moments can really help you have some good feelings as you're on the debt-free journey. I just thought of the other day, a couple weeks ago, when we went to the Thursday night market. Yeah. Something like that. It was free. We we ended up buying a couple little things for food because mm. we like food. If you haven't listened to this podcast, we <laughs> like food. We're foodies, Well, okay? hang on. Let's talk about exactly what we got. We got two mangonadas, which are like this delicious Mexican fruit blend, if you will. It's There's different so ways good. that people do them. Yeah. We got some kettle corn that we took on the camping trip with family, and we bought some grapes for Calliope, and she loved them. Grapes? So, grapes. Oh, yeah, yes. yes so it did. wasn't like we went and like blew a ton of money. Like It was, it was a nice treat. It was a yeah. really nice treat, but low cost. And, and we could have gone and just hung out for free. Absolutely. So I think of that. You go to a park. You can literally do so many things for free, or very inexpensive. And I want you to send me your ideas for low cost things to do. And I will share them on Instagram because I think it's so important that we all share our ideas with each other. Because yeah. sometimes someone in Michigan might be giving you an idea and you're like, oh, I never thought of that. Super cool. I'm going to do that over in Arizona, whatever. But we can all put our heads together. I'm totally a teacher. <laughs> Put our heads together and come up with some ideas, and I'll share them with you guys. Yeah, crowdsource some fun ideas of things yes. to do. I know a couple of years ago there was something, and it may still be around, like geocaching, where like people would like bury treasure boxes and then like <laughs> post it in like some site or something, and people would go and like un you know uncover somebody's treasure box and like find it. And it was just a fun thing to do around town, but that takes like no. No money. You know, if you have a phone, you could do like Pokemon Go or something, right? I was right? Just thinking of that. Isn't that what people do? <laughs> like, you could totally do something like that, and it, it doesn't cost you money. At least I don't think Pokemon Go costs you money. Is it Pokemon Go? Is that what it was called? Yeah, yeah. yeah Where you like, like stand on I the just corner? remember everybody was just like walking around with their face buried in their cell phone over Pokemon, you know, yeah, 20 years after Pokemon Instagram. came out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's important to put those things in the calendar so you have something to look forward to, something that brings you happiness and brings you joy. It can even be date night at home and you already have Netflix because you cut cable, but you kept one streaming service and you choose one movie and you go get a $5 bottle of wine off the lowest shelf at the bottom of the grocery store and you s sit on the floor because you may have sold all your furniture and you just enjoy your show or your movie, something like that. Yeah. There's ways that you can spice up the things that you're already doing yeah. too, to make them more exciting or spontaneous or whatever you are looking for along the debt-free journey. Totally. I love this, that. This is fun. I can't wait to hear everyone's ideas. Yeah, I'm sure we're going to get some really good ones. Okay. Our last one, and this might sound counterintuitive, but YOLO. Take a break. Take a break. You don't need to just go, go, go until you reach your end goal. That being said, you can. That's your choice. But if you have a two-year journey ahead of you, it's okay to take a month off. It's okay to take a week off. You might get off track there for a second. Just be aware of what you're doing and try not to spiral right back where you started because you've already come so far. But it's okay to stop tracking every penny and working overtime and doing all of that for your debt-free journey for a minute. You can take a break. You can breathe. Enjoy life for a second and then pick back up. 
And for me, it works really well when we kind of have an off month to start over the next month. Mm -hmm. And we don't totally trash the budget that the month that I will call an off month, but it does feel so good. Come the next month, we make the budget and it's like, ah, okay, this is a fresh new start. We're back on track. And some people might be able to start the next day. But like I said, I'm an Enneagram 3 and it's a little (laughs) all or nothing for me. So yeah, take a break. Yeah. And it's it's important, I think, that people do understand. We want you to take a break. We don't want you to sabotage things. Yeah. So, you know, if you're going to take a break, find what's comfortable for you and try and stick to that. You don't want to be like, okay, well, we're not going to budget or track our expenses and we're going to eat out a ton this month. And, you know, I'm going to do X, Y, or Z that was a really um, poor habit of mine in the past, right? Find one thing that you can do to take a break on. For example, maybe... um. Okay, here's a, here's a good one. Maybe it's the month where instead of getting just your hair colored, you're going to get it trimmed as well. And you're going to take a break on feeling like you don't get to trim your hair the way you want to, right? Or maybe you're going to take a break by instead of, I don't know, having Friday be you know a, a big casserole that lasts you through the weekend, you're going to do a really fun weekend of some really cool meals that might add a little bit more into your food budget. Mm -hmm. There's ways that you can quote unquote, take a break without sabotaging the momentum that you have going on. For sure. And I I just want to say, if you're someone who struggles with credit cards, do not when you're on a new break, touch your credit cards. Yes. Like if you've already made that commitment to not use it, shred it, do not use it. Don't even think about using it until you're on the other side of, being debt free and you've managed that um a lot of the debt free community these days because people we're not alone here people are shying away from dave ramsey Mm -hmm. in general and people are using credit cards more but you're going to see all your friends using them and if you have a credit card spending problem which was us do not touch it you know you can still take a break without having everything be like go 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 without um yeah self sabotaging that's a good way to put it yeah and that was something i'm really proud of us on along along our debt free journey we never touched the credit cards i mean we shredded them and that was it they were paid off they have never had money on them again like that's it we're done with them that felt really good mm-hmm. that feels really good yeah Love it. ugh credit cards so I just want to say this is a long journey for a lot of people and especially if you're in the six figure debt club and a lot of people don't talk about it but trust me you are not alone Mm -hmm. there are a lot of people in the six figure debt boat just trying to stay afloat and it doesn't have to be this terrible horrible three years of your life you know we don't want you to burn out we want to see you succeed we want to see you on the other side yeah but you have to you know, focus on the little wins along the way and scheduling time for yourself and just giving yourself a break while also staying focused. Mm -hmm. You don't want to make a three-year journey turn into a five-year journey because you got off track some places. You want to make your three-year journey hover around three years, give or take, because you've maybe accelerated in some moments and then hit pause and reset with your partner at other times. And that's important. And you can do that if you're mindful. You can also listen to this podcast and be like, yeah, whatever. I'm on a mission. I'm just going to go until I see the end. And that's not wrong. No. I mean, what's the worst thing that happens? You paid all, all your debt fast. Right. <laughs> that's, uh, we're not saying that's wrong. It's just, um, you know, some people who have big amounts of debt. When we started, we had $130,000 just of student loans. I mean it felt like we were never going to get over that mountain. Yeah. And that's a long journey. So that's who I'm specifically talking to. If you're in the six figure debt club, that's a heavy, heavy, that's going to take a while. So just you'll get there. Yeah. But if you're somebody who wants to accelerate it, we are hyped on that too. We support you fully and we can't wait to hear about your debt freedom. Can I add something before we pop off? I've gotten some, messages from people on instagram asking if they can come on the podcast to share their their story or to be a guest and yes we are still taking interviews this season but while we've transitioned into having you know we just moved 
having two kids, you have a new job, you're doing football season, it's a little difficult right now with scheduling. So we do want interviews. We do want to know if you want to be on the podcast. Please reach out. Mm -hmm. I'll put you on my list. And we are going to start scheduling those. But I just wanted to put that out there that, um, you know, we haven't done an interview yet this season. But they are coming up slowly but surely yeah. as we can figure out how to schedule those in our new life. Yeah. We really enjoy talking with others. That was the whole point of this yeah. podcast. So we want interviews. We want to talk with people. But managing two kids and a move and a new job in the football season and your business taking off is a little bit going on. <laughs> yeah. So we're just making sure that we get set in our routine and schedule before we reach out to people and, you know, not honor their time commitments as well. And if you have reached out in the past, you can reach out again. Yeah. I'll just double check that you're on my list of people because I do have a, a long list of people that I intend to reach out to in the future. I'm not even going to say the near future. Soon. <laughs> at some point, whenever we get time. Some point. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, if you want to double check that you're on our list, let me know. Reach because, out to Haley. Yeah, because I want to hear everyone's story. Everyone has a great, you know, debt-free journey or whatever journey you're on. We all win our own way. So I want to hear how you did it I love or how it. you're doing it. <laughs> That's going to do it for this episode of The Price of Avocado Toast. As always, we are so grateful to have had this conversation with you. We're so thankful that we get to be part of this community alongside you. Happy budgeting. You've got this, Toasties. Thanks for listening to The Price of Avocado Toast. If you vibed with this episode, share it with a friend that you're comfortable having money talks with. And if you don't mind, we'd love if you could rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. If you're in need of my support as a financial coach, message me on Instagram. I'd love to help in any way that I can. Until next time.